Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the awesome 130 second scale imaginary skeleton Triceratops here from Bandai. Dinosaur fans rejoice. It's another awesome skeleton here from Bandai. So let's go ahead and check it out in today's review. All right guys, so we'll start off taking a look at the box and its contents. First of all, the box art on this once again looks beautiful. You got this museum setting there showcasing the Triceratops skeleton right front and center. The skull mostly is the main thing you can see, but the rest of the skeleton is there. Lots of great details here and you can bet that's all gonna be represented on the actual model kit, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the box here. We got the same artwork here on the side of the box, but just to point out again, this is 132nd scale. Here on the bottom of the box gives you an image of the kit itself there and also lets you know that the full size length is going to be 230 millimeters in length or 23 centimeters long so pretty nice size and over here some information and photographs i'll be very small more about the model kit all the information is there in japanese and in english if you can squint your eyes really hard to read that but on the top of the box we have some more images of the model kit i believe probably the head is going to be maybe on a ball joint so you can kind of change the angle of that but otherwise it's going to be mostly fixed pose there is going to be detail in the base it looks like kind of with same with the tyrannosaurus there's going to be some just kind of rocks and mud and maybe some palm fronds things like that and then we do have a small photograph over here showing what the kit can look like with just a little bit of weathering done on the skeleton as well just compared to like the unweathered version just being totally solid brown like that so kind of interesting how you can of course make it look a little better with some weathering and as you can see it's a decently sized box here let's go ahead and crack it open and get to the runners which once again of course they're all going to be in dark brown like we've seen from the sample images you've got the base here as well and like with the Tyrannosaurus you actually have two separate booklets in here this one we'll focus on first as this is what would be the just standard construction manual for this. So on the back side you have some sample images there, how the kit is going to look like fully built. And you can see that in detail and again just some of the finer details of the kit. Down here pretty cool to see some just simple pointers of how to weather the kit up with, with some simple weathering tools there to improve the look of that. And that's all in Japanese and in English for you. You do also have the color guide here as well for that. On the inside we've got our parts list there also in full color albeit it's just all dark brown. Part of the construction is in color the rest of it's just all in grayscale but again with the kit being all entirely dark brown there's not really too much of a point to it being in color. Anyway so that is all good and well for your standard construction manual. But then we have the more educational booklet here that has all sorts of information about the Triceratops. Now this one is, it says, Existing Ancient Organisms Dinosaur Theory Triceratops Edition, supervised by Kyoichi Tomita. So just a cool image of the Triceratops kit there wrapped around the outside, but on the inside, got a bit here about the genealogy of Ceratopsians and the Triceratops, so that's going to be down here. If you guys are not too familiar with dinosaurs, I just personally find the Ceratopsian family extremely fascinating, just uh, the, how wide the variations are, just how many different types of like skull decorations there are for the Ceratopsians is really, really cool. So. I always find them to be very interesting. Here's an illustration here of a restored Triceratops at the top with a little bit of plumage there on it. Interesting. And all this information, again, is in Japanese and in English, so you can enjoy this uh, even if you don't want to have to worry about translating to Japanese. You don't need to do that. Uh, just a bunch of information here telling you about like what each of the bones are, and there's information about different parts of the bone. Uh, so that's all really interesting here about the forelimbs, about the ilium, so a lot of just, I mean, I'm sure there's much, much more information to be known and to be learned that you can study if you really want to get down deep. But if you just want some basic information to just kind of learn a little bit about it, really good guide for that. So here with an actual skeleton there is uh, Kyoichi Tomita, the representative of the Carnivorous Reptile Research Institute. Obviously not a carnivorous dinosaur in this case, but he was the paleontologist who was consulted for designing this kit, which is pretty cool. So. Again, just more and more information here, different theories and information about the just uh, Triceratops and Ceratops scenes in general. Here's the Pachyrhinoceros, which is a pretty cool one there with like full plumage on it, so that's pretty interesting. And a uh, snow setting there, Mystery 3, uh, did they live in groups or did they live alone? Just different stuff like this, so a lot of really cool stuff in that booklet, very nice. Alright, we'll just kind of quickly run through the runners. Here is runner A. 
We're gonna be with some parts there for the tail, some parts for the legs. Can't really quite tell at this point if it's front or back legs, but you got a lot of little bits on there. We're gonna see featuring some of the larger bones, looks like they're around for the hip section, parts maybe the tail on here as well. Runner D, it looks like it's mostly rib cage pieces. And the really cool thing about this is that in case you were worried about cutting these parts out and then like worried about trying to match the order of them, they all have these like little dots right there so you can match them up when you're putting them together in the manual. It shows you the order just based on, I mean, the parts are numbered. It's like this part here is number nine, but say you get it confused and you just want to double check, you can check the little dots right there for matching it up and not get any of the parts mixed up or confused. Last but not least, the runner E here is our base, and you can see the footprints embedded for like where the Triceratops skeleton is meant to stand here on the base, but again, you got some nice details around on that with the stones and like I said, mud and the little fern here as well. All right guys, so here is the kit all built up, and once again, didn't really take very long. The ribs probably take the most time just because there's so many of them to get all lined up, but the kit looks fantastic. I love how detailed everything is, and I mean, it's, I'm no scientist, but as far as I can tell, it looks so very scientifically accurate, which is very cool. A couple of things that I do want to point out about this, however, though, is that it's kind of hard to get all four feet to stay flat on the ground because of how front heavy it is with the head. So they're all flat on there like that, but you can see as soon as I start to move it, this back foot it keeps wanting to lift up and you can sort of adjust the angle of the legs like ever so slightly to try to get it it's not really meant to be articulated but you can kind of rotate that just a little bit to try to get it to a point so that all your feet are on the ground but I'm having trouble getting it to stay there all it takes just a tiny little drop of glue there on the back foot and you'll be perfectly fine there is some slight articulation here in just the head that's just connected via a ball joint so you can kind of adjust the angle of that if you want you can't adjust the angle of the mouth you can't close that unfortunately but you can turn the head left right up and down a little bit there and the other thing is as for connecting this with the tyrannosaurus kit they the lines of the bases kind of match up but the they don't actually fit together flushly which i don't really like i didn't really realize that looking at the photos and everything and even looking at the manual but until i get the kits together and realizing that they don't totally match in a flush manner is kind of disappointing about that. I mean, it's kind of cool they sort of fit together and I mean like the pose matches well enough, but the fact that they don't line up quite right is a little bit annoying. But I gotta wonder if they're gonna continue this line, what other dinosaurs they might come out with in the future. I can imagine maybe something larger like a Brachiosaurus. I don't know if that would be too big, but it's certainly you know famous enough. I think it would make a lot of sense either that or maybe like a Stegosaurus. Obviously they're gonna do like something pretty popular, one of the like, most commonly known, maybe a pteranodon, something like that, I think could be pretty cool as well. Uh, so I think we'll probably see maybe one or two more kits out on the line, I would imagine. It's just a matter of what we think they might be. I think Stegosaurus is probably a good bet, but let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think would be something that you might expect to see out in the line in the future? And what just what would you like to see? It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, an educated guess, but maybe just your own personal thoughts, what you might would like to see out in the line. I think it could be pretty cool to do one of the maybe a little bit lesser known species, but you know, a really like weird and interesting one like a Therizinosaurus or if they were to do another large theropod, something like a Carnotaurus, something like that, I think it'd be pretty cool. But let me know your guys' thoughts. I think this line is very fun. It's definitely, I mean, not for everyone maybe, but if you're a dinosaur fan and you just want something cool and different, interesting, unique to build, and it's certainly a lot of fun. And if you guys are interested, of course, you can check the kits out from USA Gundam Store. The link will be down in the video description as always. And if you guys have any other questions, you know, let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for checking out the video today. If you would also like to like and or subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. But until next time, hope you're having a great day and I'll see you later. Bye guys.